Back in 2004, when I first started learning Maya, this is how we did it. Before online videos, there were these good old books, kind of like YouTube tutorials, just with fewer ads and way more paper cuts. Paper cut, paper cut. Maya is an incredibly powerful 3D modeling package. And even after 20 years of using it, I still find myself finding new tools and tricks buried deep within its interface. But here's the thing, you don't need to spend 20 years to become a Maya 3D modeling pro. Ain't nobody got time, ain't nobody got time, ain't nobody got time for this. That's why I created this video, to show you the Maya 3D modeling secrets that took me 20 years to learn. So you can shortcut the process and level up fast. What's going on, 3D modeling beasts? This is JL Musi. I'm a professional 3D artist with well over a decade of experience. I've created educational content for companies like Autodesk and my 3D software reviews have been featured in PC Mag. Before we get started, I wanna let you know that registrations are now open for the Hard Surfers Masterclass. In this free training, we'll dive in even deeper into 3D modeling and I'll walk you through my simple step-by-step -step process to create pro-level models that will help you land your dream 3D job. Join over 10,000 students who've already leveled up their skills in my previous classes. This is a limited time event, so don't miss out. Register now using the pinned comment down below. Selection constraints. Selecting all the border edges on a model like this can be very time consuming. There is a better method. I'm gonna do Control, Shift, right click, selection constraints, and this pops up a powerful filter for selections. Since we wanna select all the borders, we'll select border. Now we can simply drag marquee, selecting all our border edges in one clean sweep, allowing us to do further modeling operations. Resetting to world orientation. Many times we have an object that's stuck in space and we need to reset it or rotate it back to world orientation. For example, if I select this object here, I'll do control A, to bring up the attributes, you see that while this is clearly rotated in 3D space, we have no local rotations. This can create issues if we wanna do additional modeling. For example, we need blueprints in the background, we need to do rigging, or we need to do 3D printing where the object needs to lie flat on the ground. The first thing that we'll do is create a cube, and this cube will serve as a guide here because now we have plenty of faces that are aligned to the world spacing. After that, we'll go to modify, and we'll do the snap together tool. And this tool requires that you select a face that's on the object that you wanna snap from or correct and where you wanna snap to. For this example, we need this face here that is already aligned to a flat area that we wanna align into world space. So I'll click from here to here and you see this nice little indicator. Now we hit enter and we're halfway through the process. So depending on the rotations, we might have to do this one more time. So I'll middle mouse click modify to redo the last command. And then now I'll select a face here on the side that is flat and I'll match it with a face here that is flat on this cube. I'll hit enter. And now you see that this is perfectly aligned to the world. I can delete this. And now you see that this is a perfect front view. And if we wanted to match this to the side, this is already set and oriented, but we could just simply select this group and freeze these transforms. And now if we simply wanted to rotate this flat here, we could select this, hit 90, and now you see that we're perfectly on the side, thus resetting to world orientation. Selective history delete. Sometimes in Maya, it could be beneficial to only delete certain parts of your 3D modeling history stack. For example, if we took this face here, extruded it, then took this edge and beveled it, let's suppose that we wanted to get rid of the extrude but keep the bevel. If we take a look at our history stack, undoing would not be an option because the extrude happened first and the bevel happened last. And that means that undo would first undo the bevel and then the extrude. And that's something that we don't want. So there's a method to selectively deleting only this extrude without touching the bevel. So we select this poly extrude face here, this tab within the history stack, and now we can hit select. What that's doing is selecting the extrude node within the node editor itself. Now we can simply hit delete and you see that our delete is now gone and it kept our bevel. Thus allowing us to selectively delete history from our history stack. Redo last menu command. This is an extreme extremely powerful tool in Maya that lets you redo the last command per menu. This is different than doing G to repeat the last tool. That is only constrained to the last tool that you use. 
This is quite different and actually a little bit more powerful. And I wish every single 3D modeling package had this. So for example, if we were modeling this vehicle and let's just say we selected these two faces, we did a mesh smooth just to get some more divisions on this face from the mesh menu. Then we selected this range here, went to edit mesh, did an extract. Now these are separate meshes. And let's go to x-ray mode by going into shading and going to x-ray. So we did three different commands in three different menus. Luckily, Maya remembers all this. So to recall any of these menu commands, we can simply middle mouse click and it'll redo the last command per menu. So you see that this toggled between the last two that we did here. It's toggling from x-ray and back to shaded. Here, if we select more faces and we go back to mesh, it's gonna remember the smooth that we did. And then if we go here and select another range, go to middle mouse click on edit mesh, it actually remembered the extract operation. And that is middle mouse clicking in Maya to redo the last menu command. Chamfer vertex. Sometimes in Maya, we wanna do additional 3D modeling operations on cylindrical caps and we are stopped by a pull. For example, if we wanted to add a cylindrical inset here, we don't have the option of adding edge loops, right? This is the edge loop is gonna be stopped by this pole. So we could do it here. You see the edge loops flow because we have quadded topology, but this pole here is actually not gonna allow us to drop a clean edge loop. So we can select this vert, do shift right click, go to chamfer vertex, and you see that chamfer vertex allowed us to essentially pull out a perfect cylindrical shape out of one vertice, and now we could adjust it as we need. And then now we can take this face, do any 3D modeling operations that we need. And if we wanted to cap this out, we could simply delete this face, extrude this edge, and then do merge collapse, merge edges to center. Vert snap axis constraint. This is a great workflow if you wanna combine the power of vert snapping along with constraining it to a particular axis. This is when it can be extremely powerful. For example, I'm gonna select this bench here and this rack here. I'll do shift I and we'll jump here to the front view. And let's pretend that we wanted to take this bench group here and snap it right here. So we could try doing a vert snap and then hitting V again. And I'm actually gonna jump to perspective to see what happens. But if we hold down V and vert snap, so this is not exactly what we wanted because we only wanted to move this along the X axis here. And this is where this gets pretty interesting. So I'm gonna do control Z back out of that. We're still gonna use the vert snap there at the corner, but this time we're gonna make sure that while we're holding down V, we only click on this axis. So this axis is actually gonna do a transform constraint along with vert snapping. And now you see that we're flush here on the front, but we got the snapping exactly where we wanted here in the perspective view. And that is vert snap axis constraint. Select continuous edges. Many times in Maya, we wanna create a continuous selection that is often broken up by a pull and we have to do it via multiple selections. So here, if we wanna select this range from here to here, it would require us to double click multiple times and every time this selection here is broken up by a pole or meets non-quads, we have to create another selection. There is a better method. So now we could basically just select any edge within this range. We can go to select continuous edges and now you see that our range is now selected off this continuous edge. It bypasses any poles and that only took one click. Vertex face. Vertex face is a displayed mode on your components that's been sitting in front of my face for almost 20 years and I haven't been able to figure out what the point of it was till more recently and it's an amazing troubleshooting tool. So if we're in object mode here and we right click, you see that we have something called vertex face. It actually separates all the faces, gives it some padding, but this is just displayed play wise, all your components are still connected. So if we go here, we actually have a couple of issues on the mesh. If I go back to object mode, go into sub D mode, we see that we have this here. This is a prime example of what happens when you extrude and you forget about that extrude, don't move those components. And here 
we're getting some pinching that we have to diagnose. I'm just gonna go to one mode here again, and then I'll right click once more, go to vertex face. You see that we actually found both issues quite quickly, right? You see the faces here, and then we see the faces here that haven't been offset, okay, from the extrude. And this can cause issues. So quick way of diagnosing everything. And now we could simply go back in here, go to face mode, scoop these up. We know exactly where these faces are. Deselect the extra fluff, hit delete. And then for this part here, we actually can just select all these and do a merge, just merge all those vertices. And now if we hit three for sub D mode, we see that we have no issues. And that is how you can use vertex face to troubleshoot your models. Detach components. Detach components is one of my favorite tools in Maya, and it's not really talked about much, but it's one of the tools that allow you to separate components and create different polygon islands while still retaining both separate pieces within the same mesh, which is extremely beneficial to do a variety of 3D modeling tasks. For example, here with this arm, let's just pretend that we maybe wanted to elongate it, right? This, this part right here. So, Selecting this with the marquee would be pretty uh, time consuming and not as precise. What we can do is with a model like this that has clean topology, we could simply select the edge loop here, go to wireframe mode, and now you see that we have this clean perimeter. This is gonna give us options. So we can do shift right click and we can go to detach components. Now, if we double click this, this is now a separate polygon island. So if we go to these vertices here, move them off to the side, they're no longer connected. So from this point, we can take this mesh here and move it down slightly like this. For example, maybe we just wanted a longer a bicep here or longer arm. Anytime that you separate meshes in Maya, you get weird history stacks with transforms. There's none of that here. This is still the same mesh. We can simply go back here and we can do a bridge, add a couple divisions, and there we go. We elongated this. We didn't have to do any detaching, reattaching, recombining, or deleting history. And now we basically elongated the arm pretty quickly. Another thing that we could do from this point is just simply do a delete. If we didn't want this arm anymore, maybe we're gonna continue kind of this mechanical prosthetic arm right here from the shoulder. We could simply delete this and then maybe just run the fill hole tool and cap this out, right? So we could do something like this. And that is the power and flexibility of detached components. Extruding with transforms. This workflow is incredibly powerful because it can combine the transform tools along with extrude to create unique 3D modeling operations and also save you the time from having to switch from your transforms over to a dedicated extrude tool. Let's get started. So the extrude tool is actually built in to every single transform in Maya, whether it's translate, rotate, or scale. We can actually extrude with any transform enabled. If we hold down shift, you see that we get the word extrude come up, and now we could do an extrude operation along with the transform. So maybe we wanna do an inset here, we could just drop it like so. Maybe we wanna add a panel line here, so we can simply bevel this. I'm gonna select this loop here, and with the scale tool enabled, I'm gonna hold down shift, and now we could extrude as we scale. So that's very, very nice. The nice thing about this too, is that depending on where the pivot is, you're gonna be able to get different scaling effects. For example, if we wanted to scale from here, maybe create a non-uniform effect, now we can scale from here, and you see that we're getting a much different result. A lot more control than just having the normal extrude tool. And this is very powerful when also combined with the rotate tool. For example, I'm gonna select these faces here and let's pretend we wanted to create some detail here, but it actually originated from this vert. What we can do is edit our pivot, snap it to this vert, get the rotate tool, and now we can hold down shift. And you see that we're extruding and rotating from this pivot point. And this can create some powerful 3D modeling operations and shapes very, very quickly that would be otherwise very time consuming or impossible to do with the extrude tool. And that is extruding with transforms. So if we wanted to project this text onto this flag, we have a couple of options. One would be the shrink wrap. However, we're gonna get more control and placement options 
using this method. I'm gonna open up the UV editor here. While our text is not on this flag, it actually is on the UVs. So this UV layout here is gonna facilitate us using the UV positioning to basically place this geometry. For that, we're gonna to need to select the flag first, the text second, and we'll go to mesh, transfer attributes, options. I'll reset the settings here. We want to make sure vertex position is on and then we'll use UV for the sample space. We'll hit transfer and there we go. Now, if you're having issues with this, make sure that you freeze the transforms on both objects. That'll clear up any possible headaches when doing this. This is a great workflow. If you're coming from Marvelous Designer and you have cloth and good UVs and you want to project certain geometry onto your cloth. So now you see with our text selected, we can move this within the UV editor. It's gonna reflect in the geometry and we could also scale it and even rotate it. And the beauty about this is that we could use the flag UVs as a perfect guide. So I'm gonna control Z that, just place it in the middle, maybe scale it down just a tad and I'm gonna call that done. What I'll do from here is actually just offset this slightly so I'm gonna take the text, push it along the normal, select my border edges, do an extrude, and there we go. We effectively use UVs to 3D model. Search and replace. If you've done 3D modeling for production, especially working from a low to high poly workflow, you'll know that naming conventions are extremely important for your bakes and overall scene hygiene. We jump here to the outliner. Many times working with packages like Substance Painter, we need to have a underscore low and a underscore high prefix in order to get our baking done properly. So if we wanted to name this underscore low for every single one of these, it would be very, very time consuming. Luckily, Maya has the right tool for the job to quickly rename all these underscore low so we can take into Substance and bake out properly. I'm gonna go to modify and do a search and replace names. With this tool, you see that I already have it enabled here, but I could just reset it like this. And I wanna change everything that I have selected. So I'll do underscore base. You see all these have base at the end. We wanna search for base, and then we wanna replace with underscore low. Here we could simply do selected, and we can do replace, and what do you know? All these now have underscore low at the end of the naming convention. Maybe we just change our mind. Instead of the word bolt on many of these objects here, we want to replace it with hardware. So again, we can search for bolt, replace it with the word hardware. We can do all the entire scene if we want. Again, I'm just gonna stick with selected. I'll do replace and what do you know? All our bolts have now been replaced by the word hardware. And that is the search and replace tool. And that's a wrap. Congratulations on leveling up your hard surface skills with these Maya 3D modeling secrets that took me 20 years to discover. Remember, these tips are designed to save you years of trial and error so you can start producing pro level 3D models faster than ever. Now I wanna hear from you. What was your favorite tip from the video? Did I miss any that should have made the list? Drop them in the comments section down below. I'll read every one. If you enjoyed this video, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any more tips and tricks to level up your 3D modeling. Now that you leveled up your Maya 3D skills by learning these powerful tips, it's time to put them into practice by creating your own 3D modeling project in Maya. In this tutorial, I'll guide you through modeling an energy drink can from scratch, and I'll even include the free project files and blueprints so you can follow along step by step. You can check out that tutorial right here.